Well, hey, y'all. Happy Monday. Well, welcome back. Well, because we're kind of in that little phase where we can start another garden, and I know I'm talking to plenty of people right now that are starting their very first garden, I thought I'd share with you how I make soil. Now, this isn't my original soil recipe. This is Mel's mix from the Square Foot Gardening book by Mel. I found this mix to be probably the best mix of soil possible for my garden. And trust me, this summer I've already taught myself some lessons by just filling bags up with straight compost um, that's more than ever convinced me that Mel's mix is a wonderful mix now I'm not discounting any other mixes out there um, you might be an old timer who's been doing this forever you've got a phenomenal mix that you love but if you don't have a mix that you love and you want to get more out of your soil than just what's already pre-made in a bag then I think that you're gonna love this little recipe for making soil so in the first part of this I'm going to to take you through a soil calculator so I can show you how to figure out how much soil you need for whatever it is that you're trying to fill up and then I'm gonna show you the things that you're gonna need like the implements that you're gonna need and the ingredients that you'll need to make the soil and then lastly I'm gonna show you how we actually mix up the soil um, using a tarp and I feel like you could use this tarp mixing concept on a small balcony maybe downstairs in your apartment definitely in your backyard and I'll say too that I always save the plastic bags from when I'm buying anything in a bag that relates to soil or making the soil mix um, and because that's a handy place to store your mix once you've already made it and if you're making a smaller amount of a mix than an old empty bag from a previous soil part is a great place to mix up your soil too that way if you're in a really really small place then you can just use an old bag to take three equal parts of the mix put them together and make yourself some dynamite soil okay so let's check it out okay so I found this really cool website um, gardeners.com and they're probably trying to sell us um, like soil or soil amendments uh, but I was going to put together this whole formula for how to figure out how much soil you need. But I googled and found this calculator. So it's real easy. It's gardeners.com and um, I'll put a link down below. But you go in and you can click whether or not you've got a raised bed or a pot or um, you're doing a bag. And then you kind of say what the shape of the container is and then you put your length in. And um, so my length is like four foot and our width was four foot. And just say you had a 32 inch deep bed. Then when you hit calculate, you're going to see that you need 48 cubic feet of soil. So that kind of gives you a baseline of where you need to figure out how many bags of stuff that you need. Now, when we first um, built these beds, we uh, they were only six inches deep. So I'll go up here and I'll change this to six inches because that's probably what more people have in their beds anyway. And you'll see now that we only need about eight cubic feet. And that's that's pretty easy to attain. A lot of bags that you see in the store are like 1.5 cubic feet. So again, this kind of gives you the basis to figure out how many parts of all the parts that you need. All right, so the first tools that you're gonna need to make soil are gonna be a tarp and a unit of measure. So um, most of the time when I make a big batch of soil in the yard, my unit of measure is a five gallon bucket. When I make a smaller batch of say like a seed starter mix, this right here, I think maybe it's two quarts, but this is what I use as my unit of measure because since we're working in equal parts, then we'll just use whatever our unit of measure is, be it a bucket or a container like this, to be our standard of measure. Um, you can get these at Walmart. I think this one was $4, but it's, it's a good duty, like weight and thickness. You can get some cheaper ones, a two pack for like $2. But a tarp is an invaluable thing to have in your gardening arsenal. Now, 
our ingredients to make the Mills mix, you know, that I've had so much success with, are going to be the coarse vermiculite and <laughs> this bag is upside down but this is the sunshine peat moss now i've got a bag of bioflora here this is made by a local company in arizona but what's in my bag is actually compost from the arizona worm farm but if you couldn't get down to the worm farm bioflora i've had a lot of success with it and if you were again not coming from the worm farm you'd want to have about a couple of different varieties of compost so maybe a bag of bioflora a bag of mushroom and maybe steer manure then you could blend those all together and that would be your compost so we're going to have three equal parts of coarse vermiculite the peat moss and then a compost. The reason why we use coarse vermiculite is because it's great for providing aeration in our soil. That's why a lot of times when you bought a pre-made mix from the store, you see those white pellets. Those pellets are actually perlite, which could be used if you can't find coarse vermiculite. But like I said, after two or three years and trying a bunch of different things, I'm really tapped in and tuned in to Mel's mix and I will just continue to stand by that. Maybe with some amendments to add into it, um, if you will, but those are the basics. So that's why we use vermiculite. We use peat moss because it's a good aerator, but it's also great for holding in moisture. So like my bags that are over on the pool deck that are just full of compost, all the water's just running through them. Whereas the bags over here that have tomatoes in them that has compost, some of that compost is actually holding in moisture. And it's probably because there's more woody pieces in that. So the sphagnum peat moss plays the role of helping our bags and our containers hold in moisture then that mix of compost is just the rich organic matter that is going to give all of our plants an amazing opportunity at providing us with some delicious nutrition okay so now we've got and this really needs to be broken up a little bit more but this is our peat moss this is our compost and this is our coarse vermiculite and this is all based on using this as our measure of one. Now we're gonna show you how we use a piece of tarp to mix. Now, see, that's pretty well mixed up. And that was an easy way to get that all combined without having to do a lot of extra work, you know. So you could do this by yourself by doing the same technique of just picking up one side, letting it roll into the other, picking up one side, rolling into the other. But that's the reason why you need a tarp in your life to mix soil. So once you get your mix made up and it's either on your tarp or it's in your bucket, however you've got it, when you go to fill whatever container you're using, whether it's a raised bed or a whatever it is if it's a big trough that you found if it's a if it's a fabric bag what you're going to want to do is add your mix in a layer at a time and as you add a layer you want to go in and so say whatever the depth of your container is maybe add your new newly made mix in about a fourth of the way and then water that down as much as possible get it thoroughly thoroughly soaked then add your next mix because you kind of have to train peat moss in the beginning to absorb all that water. Um, that's the thing that peat moss... That's the best thing about peat moss is the way it holds in moisture. But in the beginning, if you don't train it to actually hold moisture for you, then sometimes it can actually repel moisture for you. So as you pour in your layers into your bed, make sure that each layer gets thoroughly soaked down, okay? And then... 
when you get to your very last layer um, that's when you're going to want to bring in any additional amendments like if you want to add some boost of some blood mill or you want to put in some azomite or you want to put in a slow release organic fertilizer of some kind put that in your last layer and mix that in with your hands real good and then water in that last layer and then your bed should be ready for planting now, one thing I'll tell you is if you've got a super, super, super deep bed that maybe is a little bit more that way for ornamental or over time you want that whole bed to be filled up, a way that you can cut down on your soil cost are actually by using a lasagna layering method where you layer in like cardboard, old sticks, um, some compost matter, and then go in with your soil on top of that. So over time, everything down there in the lasagna is going to break down your soil is going to work with it and the compost in your soil is going to work to break that down and then as you add compost every season you'll just be continuing to build up the layers in your soil so i hope that this was helpful for you and i hope that you feel encouraged to be able to make your own soil and really get in touch with all of the ingredients that go into growing your own food. So I hope you're having the best day ever. And I want to thank you so much for checking in with us whenever you get a chance.